Hey everyone, so I always like to take a few minutes and just go over some of the frequently asked questions that come up in relation to the risk management assessment project. So since we're not meeting in class, this is a way for me to address some of those questions that have come up uh, in past classes. So make sure you take some time to review this. And then if you have further questions after reviewing the module this week and reviewing this video, still feel free to reach out to me via email or even set up a time to chat via Zoom. I'm more than happy um, to talk with you individually about this project because it is, uh, you know, a pretty big chunk of your grade. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, I want to address the fact that there are two options for completing the risk management assessment project. Historically, there was one option, right? The option number one is the traditional form of the assignment where you are essentially asked to go into a KNR facility of your choice and assess risk at that facility and then develop a risk assessment report using the risk management cycle that we learned about in class. That was sort of the traditional uh, option um, that students were given. This is obviously pre-COVID. Um, so this is still an option. So for students that maybe still have access to KNR sites, whether through a job or an internship or um, you feel comfortable being in a KNR site, this is still an option for you um, if you want to do it in the traditional sense. Um, and I'll address, you know, sort of whether or not you actually physically need to be in these spaces to complete uh, option one here momentarily. Um, so that's option one, and, and certainly make sure that you review both options. There are two separate assignment sheets on ReggieNet, so make sure that you review both options um, in order to decide what's best for you. Option two is a COVID-19 specific risk management uh, assessment. So for option two, you would be selecting a KNR organization that has been impacted by COVID, uh, pretty much all of them, right? Uh, and then you would focus specifically on the COVID implications in terms of risk. You would do a little bit of research to see kind of how they've responded so far, far what changes they've made, what issues and risks are still impacting them, and then you would focus on that in terms of your risk assessment. So both options are available to you. Uh, it, again, it's really up to you to decide what makes the most sense given, you know, your um, sort of access to facilities as well as your interests. Um, so I'm leaving it up to you to decide which approach you want to take. But of course, I want to make sure that there are a variety of options here so that no one feels like they have to actually physically visit a site, um, given that we are still in a pandemic. So speaking of, uh, a common question I've been getting uh, about this assignment is, do I actually have to visit my KNR site? Um, and, you know, historically, the answer to this would have been yes. I really strongly encourage students to physically visit their sites in order to assess risk, right? Because it gets difficult to identify risk if you can't actually see the site in person. Um, so the answer to this question now, given the pandemic, is that no, you do not have to physically visit the KNR site you're writing about, either for option one or option two. Um, if you decide to do option one and you're focusing on a more general risk management assessment of a facility and you don't actually plan to visit, I would say make sure that that's a facility you visited multiple times in the past and you have a pretty good understanding of, of that site in order to actually implement that risk management assessment. Now, if you are already visiting a site for work or an internship or you feel comfortable visiting a site, then by all means, feel free to go um, to that site physically. I just, I'm not requiring it, obviously, because of COVID. So again, that's a decision you have to make for yourself. If you decide you do not feel comfortable visiting a site, that's fine. I would just encourage you to identify a site that you have some familiarity with. Um, and then for option two, if you decide to do the COVID-specific assessment, really the answer is the same. Uh, you're not required to visit that site. If you want to visit that site, you're more than welcome to, but you should not uh, have to vi physically visit that site in order to assess um, their response. And certainly if it's an organization um, that has been in the news a lot or, you know, there are a lot of um, interesting things out there about their COVID response, you should be able to find a lot of that information online by doing some research. Okay, another common question that comes up with this assignment is, are photos required? Um, and the answer is, no, they're not required, but they're certainly encouraged. 
So really encourage you to include photos throughout your report where you think it might help to kind of sell, tell the story uh, about the risks that you're identifying. Um, now, there's certainly there might be situations where you don't feel comfortable taking photos as you're assessing risk in a facility, and that's fine. Not every risk has to have a photo associated with it. Um, but I would encourage you to include photos uh, when you can, um, because it certainly helps the reader, myself, and also potentially anyone else reading the report, um, to have some context, right? To know it is what it is what you're referring to in your report. And I would just add, if you choose not to include photos, you need to be very thorough in your um, sort of summary and discussion of the risks, right? Because now the person reading has no physical or, or visible, um, you know, communication about what it is you're talking about. So you're just going to have to be a little bit more thorough in that assessment. All right. Probably number one question that I get is, how many risks do I have to include in my report? Um, you'll see from the assignment sheets for both options, a minimum of eight risks is what I'm looking for. Um, I'm going to repeat that, a minimum of eight risks, right? That means in order for me to even grade your assessment, I need to see that you have a minimum of eight risks identified. So that means you should probably have more than eight risks, right? I usually say somewhere between 10 to 15 is probably a really good uh, amount, uh, like a solid amount to where I can see that you've actually done an exhaustive uh, assessment of risk at the site. Um, so just keep that in mind. And also remember that if you're actually looking at all the categories of risk, so all five categories of risks we identified through the module last week, then you should have no problem identifying somewhere from 10 to 15 risks, right? That should be easy peasy. All right, last question that I get a lot is what should I include in the appendix? So you'll see on the assignment sheet there's a whole section at the end of your report that should be the appendix. These are supplementary materials that uh, provide some kind of context for your report. So the answer to this question is it really depends, right? It depends on the site that you've selected. It depends on your level of access at that site as to what you will actually include in that appendix. So I know that's not a great answer, but I'll give you a few examples here of some things you could include, right? So if your uh, site is, let's say, a fitness-based facility, and you uh, get a copy of the waiver that participants are asked to sign, and you assess that waiver as part of the risk assessment in terms of documentation, you would definitely want to include a copy of that waiver in your appendix, right? And you can even refer to it throughout your report. Um, that goes for really any documentation you collect at the site, whether or not you include it in your report or not. Um, you know, uh, facility floor plans can be a really helpful appendix item, right? Especially if you are describing different parts of the facility throughout your report, having that floor plan um, in the appendix is really helpful to the reader to kind of visualize what it is you're referring to throughout your report. Um, and then, you know, if you're not able to really collect some of this material um, at your site, go on the internet, right? You can certainly access a lot of this stuff on the web through the company's website. Um, so don't feel like you have to physically go there to obtain it, although if you work or have an internship at a facility, it's going to be a little bit easier, obviously, for you to gather that material. Um, and ultimately, you know, you have to include something in the appendix. So if you're not able to collect a lot of documentation, at minimum, make sure you're including like a brochure um, or some kind of informational piece uh, about the site, right? Any kind of information you can provide that will provide a little bit of information and context about that site. Uh, if you don't include an appendix, you will get a zero for that portion of the report. So just keep that in mind. All right, so those are the frequently asked questions that come up in regards to the risk management assessment. Um, like I said, if you have additional questions um, after you've reviewed the module, feel free to reach out to me. We can chat via email or we can set up a Zoom chat. If you're having trouble coming up with a potential site or sort of confused about the different options, I'm more than happy to discuss those. All right, uh, you're free to start on the project at any point, um, and I look forward to reading those assessments. Thanks.